I'm always impressed by how much AI artists actually know about art. I've been hanging out in art circles for a long time. As long as there have been online art circles, at least since the early days of the World Wide Web, I've been around in one form or another. But it's rare that I'm ever impressed at how much traditional artists know about art. I mean, yeah, they'll be able to passionately tell you all about kinds of things they enjoy doing. It's different for everybody that does it. Sometimes if you're super lucky and they're being unusually honest, you might even get to hear about the stuff they don't enjoy. I personally have never enjoyed drafting backgrounds, for example. I've always been more of a character artist. I think backgrounds are boring and the real expression is in faces and muscles and anatomy and passion and anger and sadness and love, the good stuff. But one thing you almost never hear from contemporary artists is an expression of any kind of love for their craft in general. It's a lot of weirdo grind culture and hazing shit. A lot of talking about commissions and jobs and over the last decade or so they've developed this weird realism clique where they judge each other, not on their ability to communicate an idea, but rather on the one thing that's never mattered in art to anyone who actually cares about art, realism. And, and they've stratified the whole thing into these casts, fan artists at the bottom, semi-professional artists, what, whatever that means, and professional artists at the top. And being a professional artist means you're good enough at making things that look like things, but the problem with realism is that you don't actually have to be any good at realism as an art form to be good at realism. So like, when I think of realism as a form, I think of people like Rodin and Michelangelo, thinkers who broke the rules and social norms of their time who used form to express something thoughtful or interesting or, or beautiful. Or even guys like, you know, uh, Gustave Courbet, who would convey more with a single image of shock or disgust than 90% of artists in the modern era could in their entire careers. Was the move to digital to blame for it? Yeah, maybe, you know, sure it was. When, when you can't feel the canvas or the Bristol board under your fingers, it changes what the art is. But I think more than anything, the thing that's killing art, or the thing that's already killed art, is the complete lack of imagination that contemporary artists have been showing off for a generation. Digital art gets progressively lazier the more powerful the tools get. And you can track the decline of art proportionately to the computing power available every time. And, and what kills me about it is it doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to be teaching 15-year-olds who watch art videos on YouTube to trace. We don't have to teach them that that's an art form because it's never been considered an art form. That's not a skill. I mean, if you really want to get technical, tracing is just recycling someone else's expression by means of running your pointer across photographs that have already been created or art that's already been drawn. And you do this long enough and you get to this weird point in art history where everything that's being created is a crab claw fire trail and nothing matters anymore because people either have forgotten that artists fought and bled to make art about human expression for a fucking century. And this, I mean, we've come up with this whole speech about how art style is like fingerprints. And we've placed so much pressure on artists to develop branded styles that we tell people these bullshit lies that your art style is everything that you are. And all of your experience and all of your pain and indignity and torture that you've ever gone through as an artist your entire life. And people buy into this crap. 
like seriously they've been reinforcing this whole thing this whole time knowing full well that art styles aren't unique and they've never been unique by themselves and that they speak to your influences and processes and tools and the times you live in more than any abstract hyperbolic deep meaningful claptrap you could pour into it the truth that nobody's telling you is that the only difference between modern and historic art styles is the extreme overdependence on photographic references that modern contemporary art styles have. And to make matters worse, it's not even your art style that matters in the first place. God fucking damn it, it's what you say with it. It's just this really depressing recipe for failure because the pressure is there and it comes down on you from every side the moment you pick up a tablet or mouse and start creating you know people give up over this bullshit not everything's replicatable or repeatable and some people will never develop a brandable commercially viable art style as an artist and that's fine it should be fine that should be okay. Look, if you got into art because you want it as a profession, that's fine. Whatever. Do what you love. The fact is that as recently as 2010, the odds of anyone being able to make a living as an artist were slim to none. People get pissed off when I mention this, but it's a fact. You might be living the dream today. And you probably will be for the foreseeable. You might even enjoy doing it. Kudos, brother. More power to you. But it says nothing about you or your creative integrity as an artist. If you can't hack it in the soulless, dead, life-sucking world that is working as a professional artist. Some artists make art. Others make products. It is what it is what it is. And what I'm getting to with all of this is that those people, the ones who make product, they, they don't need to know much at all. And none of them are especially bright, and they've never been bright. Not smart people. Ask one about an area of art that they haven't paid much attention to, and it's like talking to a pile of bricks. Any of these guys who put their entire self-worth into being human photo filters will go completely blank. And what you're left with is a conversation with someone who you think instinctively should be educated, who won't understand so much as a single point you're making when you talk about any of these things. Artists who work with AI? Yeah, totally different story. See, in order to produce anything that doesn't look like mud with AI... You have, to have, you have to have at least some cursory art education when it comes to historic art styles. Doing it well requires either basic knowledge of computer science or an art degree or both. But either way, you're doing the research, even if you are educated. And the tools themselves, just the very nature of them, the way they deliver that powerful creative dopamine boost they inspire you and you end up digging. You find something that worked and then you start to ask yourself why that worked. Or you see someone else creating something cool, so you take a clip and you pass it into an interrogator and it starts spitting out names you've never heard of. And God damn it, people in mass are looking these names up and getting analytical about it because that's what happens if you're doing art properly. And there's just been this explosion of general art education and philosophy and history on a scale that's never happened before in my lifetime. Art made with AIs isn't getting better because the technology has somehow gotten that much better in the last year. It, it has, but it hasn't gotten that much better. It hasn't had mind-blowing innovation. What's gotten better is the community and the people using it and the art education broadly as a topic of interest and people sitting there creating amazing work, inspiring other people to create 
amazing work is what's gotten us there. And that has exploded. AIs inspire people who have never picked up a pen in their entire lives to start doodling and buying Adobe licenses. They empower disabled artists who have lost their voices to speak again. And they bring that power and that literacy to millions of people. People who were told for whatever reason by the world, by the art community, by everyone, that they could never do it. And these people are amazing and they're excited and they're funny and they're talented and they really give a shit about the kinds of art that matter to them. But most importantly, you can talk to realists about Dada or expressionist recontextualization and they get it. Today, with the help of AI, people are producing for the first time in decades art that lives and breathes and has spirit and character and meaning, not as any kind of commercial product. When that happens at all, it's secondary. No, this is art for the sake of art, the kind of shit that turned your conservative parents into art critics in the 1980s. What I'm asking here is pretty straightforward. Given that we know all of this to be true, who is the real art community again? Who's the one with the heritage and the lineage in the art of the art with art education and art creation that stands up to scrutiny across disciplines? Who's the community that welcomes everyone regardless of skill or technique, doesn't get involved in hazing, and manages both diversity and inclusion without pretense, fake posturing, or arbitrary limitation? Before the tracers declared an all-out existential but fantastically hypocritical war on other artists and reignited all the long-dead Gamergate fuckery. I was a lone voice in an array of disconnected technologies that nobody understood. I was a whisper in a sea of roaring voices. Sometimes I would run into somebody else who was exploring the same kinds of artistic expression I was. And when I met people like that, I would get this incredible feeling, a sense of closeness or kinship and camaraderie. It felt like a reassurance that I was not, in fact, alone in the dark. And then the wave hit. Steven Zapata released a massively popular disinformation video that led to me getting 20,000 messages from people I had never met and, ne and was never involved with before over the space of three months. I received death threats, had to endure multiple types of hate speech. I was doxxed by artists that I called friends just a few months earlier. They hit us with abuse and harassment and wave after wave of hate and bile, sometimes even recreating Nazi flags or recruitment posters. I am not kidding. I have talked about this at length. <laughs> they asked artists like me, who had never been part of an organized AI art community, to tag our work so they could intentionally ignore us. Of course, they could have just not been fascists and ignored us the old-fashioned way, but that's neither here nor there. But the end result was, I think, uh, a much stronger art community, at least in the corners of the internet where people with basic art education spend their time. And this thing, this incredible movement with millions of artists, both old and new, creating incredible, amazing art that's never been seen before with technology, well, it probably still would have happened without them. But in all of their spite and their incompetence 
and their hate, they did unify us. I don't know if it's appropriate to thank them for being the awful people they are, but I'm not mad about it. All the roads we travel, the journey of our lives, take another picture before we say goodbye. Arm in arm, we're standing. Standing side by side Memories fade, the legends never die One last time, let's live for something I can feel my blood, it's rushing This ain't goodbye, we'll be back someday And we will find our own way Take control of our fate